living God. Let us stand. out this morning. Good to see you out in the house of the Lord. In the way of announcements today, of course the children are going to leave on their trip right after uh, church. I didn't put that in. I assume by now they know they're going and they're ready or they're not going to make it. So <laughs> they will be going on that. Uh, there will be no Bible study Wednesday. Uh, women's meetings the 9th, Tuesday, 6.30. Uh, I'm going to be at conference from June the 10th through the 13th. That's in Wilmington. Uh, 
So only if there's an emergency, you call Elsie and I'll check in with Elsie during the day, or at night really, not during the day. Um, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get up with me during the daytime. Uh, you can't have 12 or 1500 cell phones on. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. So uh, they're gonna ask you to turn them off and most of us, most people will. Uh, so you, if you got an emergency, call Elsie and uh, I'll pick up on the message that evening and if it's something that I really need to come back for, then I'll have to leave and come back. But keep in mind it is in Wilmington. Uh, I won't be here in an hour or nothing like that. Uh, and that's the 10th through the 13th uh, that I'll be there. Any other announcements this morning? Yes, Paul, can I read this? Uh, Y'all remember John Bowman and uh, he had passed away and we hadn't heard anything from <laughs> Phyllis. I mean, uh, Fayette, and um, she wrote this, and she says, It's been a long time, but I think of you all so often. Life is really hard since John died. We miss him so much, and it seems like he should be coming home at any time. Everything I do is just so sad, as I always had him with me, just about all the time, 58 and a half years. It's tough, but I look so forward to only good memories. I have so many of those. It just takes time to get there. I'm so sorry that I did not get to the church. It has been a long time coming back to me. Please tell everyone I am truly sorry and that I love them. And take care of yourselves because I think of you so much. And then she sent the wrong address, the little thing that you send when someone passes away. She sent the wrong address so it come to me. Since during a time like this, we realize how much our friends and relatives mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered. Dear special friends, as always, your love has come through strong to us during this time. Thank you so much for your gracious, caring thoughts and prayers. Thank you for the cards, visits, and just being there when we needed you. You are and always will be special to our family. We love you, Fayette and family. Okay. Yeah, I know they missed. I know she misses John. We went up that time or two. Uh, any other announcements? If not, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this privilege we have to come together and worship you, to be in your house. Lord, we pray that the things we say and do here this morning will be in accordance with your will and keeping with your word. We pray for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on each one here, that their needs would be met today in songs, words, something that is said, or by you just gently nudging their hearts. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 158. Thank you.
Spirit. I see His countenance resting on your face. I know that there are angels hovering all around us for the presence of Amen. Did good. <coughs> While they're coming, okay. Well, I, why don't you put it out back on the bulletin board? That's depending on. That's what I would do with it. Yeah. Uh, take a moment now and look at our prayer list at this time. Uh, Winnie Bell was added her to, I added her to the prayer list this morning. I uh, asked you she fell and hurt her elbow and her knees. Um, apparently not too bad, but at least need to keep her in her prayers. Uh, and Emily Craft, I believe, was added to the prayer list at Sunday school. And uh, DJ, our young friend over there, got some good news. Uh, the tumor in his head shrinking. Uh, the doctors weren't looking for that. Just we need to keep him in our prayers that it will maybe continue to shrink and go away. It's possible. God can do things. How about others this morning? Updates or anyone we can take off the prayer list or add to it? All families have a special need for prayer today. Okay. Just your family. All right. We'll do that. How about others? Okay, if there are no others, then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we pray for those needs that, of those individuals on our prayer list. Lord, we pray for the ones that were added to it this morning for their needs. And Lord, we pray for, the, uh, for Brenda and Bob's family, Lord, this morning for the special needs that are in their life. Whatever those are, needs are, we lift them up to you, Lord, that you would take care of them in the way that way that you would have them being taken care of. We pray not only for those needs, Father, but for the other needs that might be on someone's heart here this morning for whatever reason they didn't feel comfortable in lifting it up publicly, and that's fine, Lord. But if they lift that up, need up to you just now, we join them and pray for the needs that's being lifted up. Father, we also pray not only for the needs of those on our prayer list this morning, but we pray for our, our, our churches, we pray for our nursing homes, our our armed forces, our government, the tragedies. Lord, we just pray for this world today and the governments of this world. It's in such a turmoil and such a mess. Not since in the 40s has it been in this kind of a mess. Lord, we pray for your intervention in ways that would somehow help us bring peace, Lord, back instead of continuing down this spiraling hill as it seems to be getting more and more in conflict. 
We just pray for your mercy and for your forgiveness and your guidance and your healing and your wholeness, not only of individuals but of this, this church and this nation. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. If we could have our ushers to come forward. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come together today and giving thanks to you for all, for all you have done for each and every one of you. God bless this church, this church family, and bless Brother Claude as he brings a message that it will inspire someone's heart here today. And Lord, bless the offering that we have took up today, that it will be used to justify and glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Remain standing, turning your hymnals to number three three eighty nine.
Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 18, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. The book in Charles Dickens, you know, all of you are probably familiar, it was the best of times and the worst of times as the book opens. Uh, Charles Dickens was writing about the times that, was, that he was living in. And when we think about it, I don't care what century you live in or what age you live in, it's always the best of times and the worst of times. Uh, that's just the way things are. But Paul says, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways, sins that stood in secret, uh, the judgment of others. We all know what he's talking about there. We do not use deception. Here he means we don't use magic tricks. Uh, most of the false religions of their day and time relied on lies and magic tricks. Of course, now we have some preachers today that rely on lies uh, and half-truths of the Bible. Uh, I talk about them all the time. There's one particular camp meeting, I think, on television. That's all that guy does is ask for money. Give me some seed money. He don't preach on nothing but seed money. Uh, and seed money goes to him uh, and uh, God's going to bless you just, just send me that money and God's going to put a blessing on you I don't think so but anyway we don't use those kind of things we don't uh, preach for monetary gain nor do we distort the word of God on the contrary Paul said by setting forth the truth plainly we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God Paul says he don't do any of that stuff. He just simply preaches the word of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, if you don't understand it, it's veiled. If you can't, if you can't see the truth this morning to those who are perishing, the blind, the leading the blind, Matthew says, both fall in the ditch. In other words, if you can't see the gospel this morning, you can't hear it, then you need to get your heart right with God. There's something wrong. Uh, if you don't understand the, the gospel that's being preached, uh, you have a problem. Uh, I'm simply reading what the Bible says. And Paul says if it's veiled, then you've got a problem if you don't understand it. Uh, 15 through 14, Matthew says, Those who do not see do not believe in the one and only eternal God. In other words, if you don't see and understand the gospel, then Matthew is, is questioning your belief, your faith. Uh, in God. Verse 4, the God of this age, and he's not, this is not God here, it's the God of this age, and we have many gods of this age. Uh, false gods are prevalent today more so than they were, I think, in the time Jesus walked. The God of this age, the worldly things, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, Paul says, we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord and ourselves is your servants for Jesus' sakes. For God, for God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we, listen to what Paul said, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all that, that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We have heard, we have heard, we have hard pressed, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, killed, but not destroyed. Our spirits live on. We always carry around in our body the death of Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Uh, verse 15, All of this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Verse 16, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, not on what is seen. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, 
but what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The word of God for the people of God. You and I live in a physical body. We all know that. Paul likens this body into a, a clay jar that our spirits live in. Uh, if you've ever picked up clay jars, you know if you drop them, they're more easily broken than glass. You can kiss it by. <laughs> if you drop a clay jar, it's going crack and bust. <clears throat> Paul says we live in a clay jar. Our spirits do. We're easily broken. We're easily damaged. We're easily hurt. <clears throat> and in saying that, have you noticed, and I'm sure you have, that we have people today, in our, even in our midst, that just can't seem to win. Sometimes I guess I feel like I can't seem to win. I don't know about you. I try as I may and yet it seems like the harder I try to climb the hill, the slicker, slicker it gets and the further down I slide. I read a story this week about a ball player who hit a foul ball and he hit a spectator. And while they were carrying her out on a stretcher, he hit another foul ball and hit her again. I mean, you're talking about coincidence. <coughs> some people, some people around us that I know and you know just can't seem to win. We just can't seem to get ahead. I've had days like that. Have you ever had a day like that? Where it just seems nothing goes right? And the harder you try, the worse it gets. Pastor Alan Carr tells, the, Carr tells the story about an advertisement that he put out out of curiosity asking how many people would like to go to another planet. He got 18,000 applications. You've been so discouraged that you just like to go somewhere and start over? We all have those days, don't we? Those things that happen in our lives that discourage us, that get us down, that happen in our families, that happen in the, happen in the country, that happen in the world. We have those things that, that, that we just get discouraged. Uh, we're discouraged with life. We'd like to go somewhere and start over. We'd like to go back and redo. I like a book I have, a little book called The Gospel According to Charlie Brown. <clears throat> it's, it's, a little, it's a good, it's, Schultz was a very religious man. And almost all the Peanuts cartoons have a gospel message in them, hidden within them. And uh, Charlie once told Linus, said, sometimes I feel like I just want to run away from everything. I just want to get away. You want to just feel like you want to get away. And Snoopy reflects. I remember having that feeling once when I was at the Daisy Hill Pumpy Farm. <laughs> I climbed over the fence, but I was still in the world. I was still in the world. We can't run away from our problems. We can't run away from life. We can't run away from the situations that we get ourselves in or that others get us in. No matter where we run or how hard we try to hide, our problems always seem to get there ahead of us. Don't they? I mean, my problems always seem to be about two steps ahead of me. And if I speed up, they seem to speed up. They seem to know what's going on. We live in a world today where Christians are being killed for their belief, not in God, but because they don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, even in this country, we've got some now that are beginning to kill people 
simply because you don't believe in Jesus Christ. They claim they believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Paul came up in a time when Christians were rejected and killed. Rome killed them. Israel stoned them. Jews did. Paul was a wealthy man. Paul had plenty of wealth in the, in the day of his day and world. In fact, he was thought to be in line for the next high priest job, which would be the top job in the nation of Israel. Paul was shipwrecked, beaten, thrown in jail, probably martyred from what we know. He was probably killed for being a Christian. Constantly criticized. The church criticized him and the pagans criticized him. He got in several arguments with James and John, the brothers of Jesus, half-brother of Jesus. And yet, Paul, as we will read as Paul never seemed to get discouraged. Brother Paul always seemed to be upbeat. He never gave up. He never felt sorry for himself. He never said, Why me, Lord? Why me? Why are you doing this? Why? Why me, Lord? He, he, never, he, never, well, he never said that. What was Paul's secret? Paul's secret was is that he had an enormous faith in God. He really had a faith of trust, complete trust in God, in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Corinthians 4, he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. We were dying and People are against us and the world's against us. But yet inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Because I talk to my Savior, my Lord Jesus Christ. Him and I are like this. Inseparable. Our faith in Jesus as our Savior Paul knows and says and repeats over and over, it promises you eternal glory. It far outweighs the things that this world has to offer you, which are all temporary. Paul says we fix our eyes not on the things that we can see in this world, but you fix your eyes and the eyes of your heart and the eyes of your mind on things unseen, things eternal, the promises of God, the promises of Jesus Christ. We fix our eyes on these things. You see, what is seen, what we see here is all temporary. Everything we see is temporary. It's going to pass. Some of it's in your lifetime and my lifetime's already passed. And the other's passing. But it what is unseen is eternal. We are promised what is unseen. Eternal life. Eternal place in heaven. Eternity. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but it's what is unseen. What is eternal. And when we have that faith and that trust in God that Paul is talking about, it's at that time that you come to know for a surety that you have an eternal home in heaven. If you don't know this morning, you can know. You can know that you can know for a fact of a surety that you have a home in eternity in heaven with God. Jesus Christ has promised it, and you can trust in that promise. We have a home not built by human hands. See, we have a lot of folks, teachers today, preachers, they beg for money, they promise miracles that God never promised. God never promised me a rose garden down here. Paul sure didn't have one. Neither did any of the other disciples that led the early churches. But they had the faith that Stephen had. When Stephen was dying, being stoned, 
and they were killing Stephen and he knew he was going to die. His last words was, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I have a home in eternity. If they don't change, they're going to have what they got here and when this is over we can go on, they ain't going to have nothing but a place in hell. You see, if you read your Bible, you'll know that these half, when these half, people, we don't read our Bibles today. People are not reading their Bibles today. They, they're sitting on the coffee table and you, you dust the dust off of them. I reckon maybe when the preacher comes by, they might pick them up and dust them. Because a lot of them don't even have them on the coffee table anymore. You can't find them. They took somewhere. I'm not sure the people has got them to where they're at. I'm not sure they could find it to head to an emergency. If we read our Bibles, we know that these half-truths, you'll know when you're being told half-truths and lies. Of course, so, many, so much problem with our people today, we want to we want to go through the drive-in window and get our salvation. And it's not there. You know, they've got drive-in churches now, I think, where you can drive up and park in the parking lot and pull your speaker in the car. No fellowship, no gathering together. Can you imagine sitting in your car with it, listening to the speaker like you used to in the old drive-in movies, when the preacher gets through preaching and they get through singing, you hang your speaker up and drive off. <laughs> That's church. And they got a lot of people to go. We think we can get our salvation at the drive-in window. But guess what? It's not there. What I'm getting at in all this too, that I want to get at this one, Paul never let the troubles of this world get him down. I got problems. You got problems. If you ain't, God bless you. <laughs> I mean, God bless you. If you ain't got no problems this morning at all, if everything's hunky-dory in your life and the life of those around you and everything's perfect, Hallelujah. <laughs> We all have trouble. Paul had trouble. What empowered Paul to endure in the face of this suffering was his immovable faith in God, in Jesus Christ. A faith that totally, 100%, put no matter what happens, I trust in God and Jesus Christ even if it costs me my life. That amazing faith. It's the kind of faith that you and I need. It's the kind of faith that the Bible teaches, that Jesus talks about, that the disciples talk about. It's an amazing kind of faith. People who, who have, have faith when battling against overwhelming odds inspire others. They look around and say, how do you do it? Because I trust in God. I trust in Jesus. That's how I do it. You know, if you would laugh every day, if you would... Uh, Get up and laugh every day if you cry every day. Joy, happiness. If you do that seven days a week, find something to laugh about, find something to cry about, find something to be joyful about, to praise God about, that would be a good day. If everything was great, If everything was great in everybody's life, if I didn't have any trials in my life, my faith wouldn't be what it is today. You want to know where your faith is strong, you let the doctor tell you you got cancer. And right quick you find out where your faith is at. Real quick. Sometimes life is great. Sometimes life has dark days. Sometimes life's filled with confusion, with doubt. Sometimes life's filled with discouragement. Not necessarily of, of you, but of, of your family, you get discouraged. Sometimes these days string out in the months and years, seem like they're never going in. We all have days that test our faith. 
days that offers valuable benefits, days that offers great opportunity for spiritual growth. I think you grow more when you have trouble than you do when everything's great. When everything's great, I don't think we talk to God like we ought to, but you let things start going bad if you really got true faith in Him, that's when you begin to really talk to Him, Lord, <laughs> where are you at right now? I need you. Dark days really offer you the best opportunity to witness to your faith. I look at some people sometimes and say, hi, the world, are you, how are you making it? And if you get to know those people, they have great faith. That's how they make it. And I think, Lord, thank you, you ain't tested me like that. And yet, they plow ahead. You know, anybody can handle the mountaintop days. Is anybody here can't handle a great day when everything's going well on top of the world? I mean, things couldn't be better in life, in business, in love, in home, and everything. You know, that's the easy days to handle. Everybody can handle those days. It's we, when we can handle the dark days, when we can handle the days that our lives become a living testimony of our faith that we grow stronger and closer to God. It's how you handle those days. Those are the days in truth you're really better able to, to, to share your love of Jesus, to show it. Paul knew about those dark days. He writes, therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we may be wasting away, getting older or whatever, Inwardly, we are being renewed. God will, re Jesus will renew you day after day after day after day if you let him. That's the believer's hope. Hope says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. Hope says, this too shall pass. Paul says, do not lose heart. Paul says, this is our witness to an unbelieving world. It's a life full of love, of the love of Jesus Christ, whether life has us on the mountaintop or whether life has us deep in the valleys. On a level plain. Paul says, remember, God is with you. If you trust and believe in Jesus Christ, God is with you. And no matter how it looks down here the end, if God is with you, then the end's going to be all right. The end's going to be all right. No matter what. Everything's going to be all right. Because we have eternal life and salvation. Amen. 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 We do have communion this Sunday. Uh, the Methodist Church has an open communion, meaning that you do not have to be a member of the church to take communion with us. Uh, it means you simply have to be right, have your heart right with God. If your heart's right with Jesus Christ, you trust in Him as your Savior, then we want you to feel free to come forward and take communion with us. If you'll take your hymnals and turn the page... <coughs> Twelve... Christ our Lord invites all to his table who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take a moment now, if you would, and pray in silence as you prepare yourself for the Lord's table.
Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us in, while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now if we'll take a moment. We've already uh, taken up the offering, but tell to your neighbors you love them and God loves them. We love you and God loves you. bread here represents the body of Christ which has been broken for you and me the body of Christ the grape juice here represents the blood of Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of sins the blood of Christ shed for our forgiveness for you and for me The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always, everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you would, drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray our Father's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who tr Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And now if we can have the ushers to come forward. The body of Christ broken for you. Henry, the body of Christ broken.
those right here to my left will come, and then the ones over there, and then the ones to the right. Feel free to kneel at the altar.
Take your hymnals now if you would and turn to page number 593. 